This is Business and Economy Network. Hello, wonderful people watching within and outside Nigeria. Those of us watching via the online channels, thank you so much for letting us into your homes, offices, wherever you're watching us from. Thanks for joining us on this episode of your program. This is Business and Economy Network. My name is Ohioze Edna. On our program rundown for today, we bring to you on Business and Economy Network News, the Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAB Nigerian Chapter, creating awareness on modern biotechnology, looking at its safety on human health and the environment. For Straight Talk, we have a chat with the chairman, Egbin Power PLC, one of Nigerians leading firm in electricity generation and distributing matters. For Spotlight, we have the vice chairman, chief executive officer, Icon Stockbrokers Limited, providing financial advice and solving stockbroking challenges in Nigeria. For special report, we bring to you the MDCEO, PFI Capital Limited, an investment and asset management expert. Do take advantage of our quiz segment sponsored by Dana Airline Limited in continuation of its 10th year anniversary. You know how we do it. It's never a boring moment. I'll be right back. The Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAB, in partnership with the Institute of Agricultural Research, recently held a World Press Conference on the release of transgenic hybrid cotton varieties to the Nigerian market to bring about the development and commercialization and deployment of the two transgenic varieties, namely Marco C567BG2 and Marco C571BG2. In attendance was the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, the Director General, National Biotechnology Development Agency, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Science and Technology, and the Country Coordinator, Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, and others. Uh, this is history in the making for a number of reasons. One is that Nigeria was one of the largest exporters or producers of cotton in the world. But all of a sudden, we lost all that. I remember in the 1960s and 1970s, the textile industry was the second largest employer of labor in our country after government at that time. But today, that is no longer the situation. But what we are doing today is going to help us to bring us back to that glorious past when we were able to grow enough cotton to feed our textile mills. Today, I'm particularly proud to be here because this release of this variety of cotton particularly cheers my heart. To tell you how much the disaster in the textile industry has cost us, what I'm wearing is six meters of material. What he's wearing is 12 meters of material. Having to import all of that has contributed immensely towards Nigeria's economic woes. We can blame every government that comes. Sometimes the cause of today's problems is something that happened 20, 30 years ago. And we didn't watch. We were not conscious enough. Importation of everything, from toothpicks to turbines, and textiles, and fruit juice concentrates, pencils, erasers, all of these have really created problems for you and I, and not only for now, but for the future. We have to revive the textile industry. We have to bring the jobs back. We have to cut down on imports. Egbin Power PLC is situated in Lagos State, Nigeria and serves as the biggest addition to the electricity industry. Egbin is the largest power station for almost one decade in a row and also the biggest single generating power station in Black Africa. Egbin Power Plant's its inception was built to meet the ever-rising demand for electricity in Lagos State and its environs, having in mind the increased rate of Nigerian's population. Egbin continues to generate and distribute power to all. 
In a chat with the chairman, Mr. Kola Adishino, he explained the need why meters should be made available to at least 90% users, who should also ensure to always recharge and not buy cut wires. There is the need to boost the power electricity value chain system, as a nation out of sufficient power is a crippled nation. So what we did in Ikeja was to deploy an advanced metering infrastructure technology, smart meters. Those were the ones that we went to market to procure. So when people speak to us that we are not metering, we actually signed a contract with Huawei to install $106 million meters within the Ikeja franchise area. So we actually deliberately went all out to go technological so that we can find a way of, of resolving this problem. But then part of the problem is now that the cost of vigilance and surveillance is higher than what should be elsewhere, value system. So you see people come on, give us meter, give us meter. Meanwhile, you install the meter. When they pay the first bill, they say, ah, no, this is too much. Now, what do they do? They call somebody, they connive with whoever, and then they go and then they do whatever they want to do. So how do we survive in such a climate? So if you don't address, whilst we are addressing us with regards to everybody must be metered, yes, we want to meter, it helps our businesses. It gives us that clarity, then we can measure. And when we measure, we can improve when necessary. And those who consume more power will ensure, and pay for that power will ensure they get more. We are in the business of electrifying Nigeria. We are not in the business of distributing darkness. So it's, it, the more power that is distributed by us, the more money we make. So nobody is saying we don't want to, we want it. We actually desire it. Now, unfortunately, when the distribution companies are faced with the challenge of people not paying their bills, it affects everybody in the value chain. So you now have another problem, which I'm dimensioning for you fully. The cost and the price, there's a mismatch. People are bypassing the meter straight to the pole. When you don't pay what you are meant to pay, you shy away from paying what you are meant to pay, the gas man will suffer. The generation company will suffer. Transmission company will suffer. First, as a nation itself, we need to address our value system one more time. If we don't have a value system that all of us have signed to, then we're likely to fail. I mentioned something earlier that part of the gain to us in Sahara, at Edmi, FIPL and IE is the fact that we hired people whose culture centered around discipline, the love of the nation first. At any point in time where self-interest is superior to general interest, the system will fail. The system, no system can thrive where there is every dose of self-interest. And until we get around that, we're not going anywhere. Everybody must say, look, let, let's know when we're doing politics. When we finish with politics, let's come to governance. At the level of governance, it's all of us coming together as a nation. 200 million people coming together with the resources we have, we will beat any nation in the world. But as we speak today, we are not together. Because once we got to get into the room, everybody has a mindset that, okay, this person wants to game me. And once you start with that kind of negative mindset, there is no way you can promote harmony, cohesion, or growth. It's impossible. The human body is reflective of how a system is meant to operate. When you are healthy, it simply means your liver, your kidney, your heart, the essential parts of your body, they are all working together. I'm lifting my hand up because there is a message from here, here, and here. So they go together. That I desire to lift my left hand up. So there is a connect. So until we connect the dots, of Nigeria, we are going to continue to lag behind.
my hope and prayer and aspiration is that there will come a time when all of us will set aside all those vestiges that divide us, all those cobwebs that is not allowing us to see well, that is not allowing us to move well, until we remove those cobwebs and then we start to say, okay, we, the citizens of Nigeria, we, the people of Nigeria, that's why the Constitution started with we, we, we. It's not one, it's not I. I can't do it alone. There's nothing I can do alone. I've, I'm just a, an individual. There's a limit to what I can do. But when we're many, when we come together, when we all coalesce around a common vision, a common dream, a common goal, a common objective, and we say we're going to pursue that vigorously together as a nation, there's nobody that can beat us. So in Nigeria today, the legislature, the judiciary, the executive, we, the businessmen, all of us, the regulator, must all come together to accept that it's time to lift Nigeria up. Icon Stock Brokers Limited stands as the third established stock broking firm in Nigeria, headed by Mr. Chike Uwanze as the Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer with an undaring experience in finance and stock broking. For Icon, it has been five decades of excellent services and has lots of testimonials to its products and services that are second to none. Icon is built solidly on the values of integrity, who acknowledges the fact that businesses are in existence to maximize profit, but Icon Stock Brokers Limited has made its business more of value creation for its clients. Icon continuously indulges in training for its employees in order for them to always meet with best global practices. The firm has achieved so much with the slogan, our word is our bond. One thing we built in this Icon Stock Brokers is integrity. Yes, we like to make money, but not by all means like to make money honestly you know dealing with uh, clients honestly it pays at first you might think it's not you know it won't pay but one thing that we emphasize on is as a matter of as a stockbroker our motto of stockbroker is my word it's my bond. And that's what it is. So that's all. And all those who have uh, come through me, my organizations, they will know that that's all that I preach. So there are some young people who want to do quick deal, this thing for me. No. I've always told them is that, and I believe, that the financial services industry is a marathon race and not a 100 meter dash. There are a lot of training programs organized by CIS, you know, SEC and other organizations. So we continue, we continue to do that, all of us. Because everybody here has gone through one training or the other. And Stock Exchange is also introducing a lot of training. That is the best thing to do, really. And we have never failed any client. That's why, that's why they always invest with them. Our integrity. That's what we sell. Even sometimes SEC. Uh, people in SEC still wonder if Icon Stockbroker is still exist, alive. Because there's no, there's no petition or any complaint from clients saying, no, we have never been to any business. So integrity. Straightforward dealing. Well, we'll... we'll uh, Encourage them to, you know, in a way, because if we do not, we need investment. Go but government itself has to do a lot to enable investors to come in. I think one of the greatest, uh, though they say cost of doing business uh, is, uh, is improving here in, this, uh, in, in Nigeria. Because government is one of the greatest inhibitors of investors. Investors coming in, even for those who are, 
for those who are local. They've always had problems. Both state and uh, federal government. They have after, they after investors. But they should be encouraged. But until we also create some sort of competition. You see, competition is not only wheat. Amongst the companies, but competition amongst governments, various state and federal governments. There's no competition. You know where I mean healthy competition. And the reason why there is no healthy competition is everybody, every state government sit at home in the first instance at the end of 30 days, at the end of the month, carry cap in hand to Abuja to go and collect money until we decentralize. You know, the First Republic, a lot I have written on that, and a lot of people are talking about that now when we talk about restructuring. Restructuring is not necessary, it's not really because we want to create enclaves. Restructuring, in the first instance, is to enable the federating units, run a true federal system. The federate union you needs to be in a position to compete friendly, you know, friendly competition. This is what happened in the First Republic, where we have three regions, later four. You see, each of the regions, they were very, very competitive. The competition was among them too very healthy. Because of the atmosphere that was created, you know, it was during that period that I'm talking about that the Western region built the Western House, the investment house, both of them here on Broad Street, the Cocoa House, and all the infra, you know, all the buildings infrastructure that is now being managed by Wema, Wema Board. Those were the investments of the Western region. What are the investment of all these eight states within that right now? None. So until we create this atmosphere, yes, we'll be encouraging uh, investors. We still do, because but they will ask you questions, and the question, the answer will always give them that yes, steps have been taken. To make sure that a, a, a good environment is created for investors. Mr. Peter Elege is the MDC of PFI Capital Limited with credentials that shows why PFI, though young, is doing well in service delivery. PFI Capital Limited is an investment advisory and asset management firm located in Lagos State, Nigeria, set up with a basic responsibility to provide asset management and investment advisory services to Nigerians. With a structure of putting the clients first in all his dealings and weekly trainings of staffs on best global practices on asset and investment management, PFI Capital Limited is a force to reckon with in the industry. We are actually very encouraged. Uh, we're very, very encouraged by what we're currently doing uh, in terms of our growth in assets under management. And um, so far, so good. Um, what it is, basically, is because of what we offer, uh, we always look at clients as first. We always look at delivering exceptional value to clients in terms of return and customer service. And that is what I've actually attracted um, uh, assets under management to us. So we also intend, of, intend to grow assets under management by still bringing out innovative products to encourage savings, savings mobilization, you know, into the financial system. You know, you must, you must, what we have done now is not just focusing on investment management, but also focusing on the complete facets of your life. So retirement planning, education planning, risk management in terms of health and life insurance, right cash flow planning these are all you know um, services you know, we offer to our clients financial planning services outside investment management in order to encourage people to actually plan for the future in line with their goals 
and objectives. Okay, so we have offer cash management products. Um, we have the fixed saver and the fix. Those are basically short-term cash management products backed by the government securities, FGN and treasury bills. Um, we also have managed portfolios. Basically, managed portfolio is for portfolio management clients seeking to make alpha returns. Right, so we basically do your profiling, determine your investment objectives and your risk constraints, construct a portfolio for you, you know, and of course um, make uh, uh, good returns. Then we have um, investment access pro products. Those products actually help investors that want to invest in all kinds of financial securities, both local and international. To actually invest, we give them investment access to different types of assets, be it fixed income, equity, money market securities, real estate, local and international. In fact, as you came in today, my team actually is having what we call empowerment session. We do that on a weekly basis. We try to send our staff to the trainings all over the world, right, on asset management and financial markets training basically all over the world in order to develop the necessary and relevant competences to be able to meet the challenging environment to see ourselves. Finance, finance is about a lot of things change. You have to be dynamic in this industry. So you must understand what is going on, right? And take advantage of what is going on. Some people see it as challenges. You look for the opportunities where there are challenges, you know, to be able to create value for yourself and for your clients. <laughs> We started the process of digitalization of our processes, everything from all from account opening all the way to investment, right? Um, what it is is basically we are trying to take advantage of I ICT uh, in our operations, right? And uh, even in our investment processes. Um, so I earlier mentioned that we're actually trying to bring out a fund called, um, it's gonna be an, uh, an AI fund right which is going to be automated investing basically uh, so it's just to take advantage of um, ict to be able to reduce cost you know and of course maximize resources first of all yes why commodity dependent country right we make about 92 percent of our foreign earnings from export of commodities particularly crude oil yeah so it's Seven is not of seventy dollars at the moment, which is not bad, right? Um, our production has increased about two point two million barrels per day, so in terms of it's a good sign. However, we need to diversify the economy, right? Uh, there are some negatives, um, or rather, I'll call them challenges um, that are currently the economy is currently facing, right? Which is the pressure on the foreign reserves. And of course, it's because of what's happening externally in the developed markets, you know. So it's putting a lot of pressure on the foreign reserves because the CBN wants to maintain exchange rate stability, uh, right? And um, that is putting a lot of pressure on the foreign reserves. Also, we have political, the elections coming up, and that which is the political risk. Um, it is also, investors are wary, uh, foreign investors are wary. They want to see what will happen. They want to see there's going to be a peaceful transition. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm optimist. So, yes, I expect <laughs> there'll be a peaceful transition. And uh, I just see it's an opportunity to take advantage of, you know, of the prices as we see, you know, value stocks and uh, both in the equity and fixed income space. Um, taxation is supposed to work for everybody. The reason why we pay tax is for the common good of everybody. Yes, there are complaints that there are multiple taxation from the local government guys you know, to pay licenses for all kinds of services, right, from the state government and from the federal government. Yeah, you can look at it in two ways, right. Um, one way is taxation is important as another source of revenue for the government in order to provide the necessary social amenities, right, for others. However, you should not also kill businesses, businesses that will create jobs. You know, so there must always be a balance. It is very, very important. I understand that we must, we must pay your taxes and you pay your taxes timely, right? But there must also be a balance, right? So that you don't put too much pressure on the businesses that are actually creating employment for people.
This is Business and Economy Network. Viewers, hope you had a wonderful time and learned something new as usual on today's episode of the program. But before I go on, so thank you so much for your contributions. Without you, I keep saying we will not be here. For more information, you can visit our website and for past episodes of the program, it can be viewed on our YouTube channel displayed on your screen. Join us same time, same station next week. We love you. God bless you. <music>